So, bring you greetings from Arosha in Kenya, in Waitamu. And uh, it's a normal Thursday morning here. We've been catching birds on our nature trail. And here I've got a beautiful white-browed kukul, which we don't catch that often, though it's quite a common species here. He's got his ring, um, so he's ready to go. He's been measured. Um, lovely red eye of an adult, and this funky hairstyle he has. So I'm going to let him go now and uh, let him get on with his life. And here we go. Great. So we thought we'd want to bring a, another update to you and uh, share some of what's been going on with the Rocky Kenya. Um, COVID, of course, has been a, a headline worldwide and no less here. But actually, we've been very blessed, particularly considering what's been going on in uh, Northern Europe and North America. So it's been great to be able to function and we've been uh, very grateful to have lots of guests coming through. Christmas was very busy, New Year as well. And we've had a constant trickle of people coming into Mwamba, which has been uh, a real blessing. So another major highlight over the last six to eight months has been, of course, expanding the nature reserve in Dakacha, the Arosha Kenya Dakacha Nature Reserve. Um, we've been amazed at the response to the appeals which we've had and feel very blessed that we've been able to, as a result, expand the reserve to now uh, over 2,200 acres in size and growing. Um, we've had a, a great a grant from IUCN Netherlands which has enabled us to really move ahead and purchase um, quite significant areas of forest. So we're very, very grateful for that. We're still welcoming donations. We hope to expand it to up to 10,000 acres, which is uh, encompassing the entire habitat that the Sokoki Scops owl and the endemic um, golden rumped elephant shrew is found in. Um, but it's exciting as we see that. However, there is a lot of destruction going on around that area. And so there is a real urgency to make sure that we can secure that before it all goes. A lot of that forest is gone and is going quite quickly to charcoal burners and to low grade agriculture, which is why we have a real urgency to purchase the remaining bit of forest. And then we'll be into restoration of the forest, which has been damaged and gone. That's a long term vision we have, but an exciting one uh, as well. The other project which has started recently is the Kenya Community Development Fund has funded us with our assets program, the Arabuko Sukoke Schools and Ecotourism Scheme, um, to really roll out with the parents of the kids who we give eco bursaries to for secondary school, roll out with them some conservation activities such as uh, energy saving stoves, uh, solar lamps, and tree nurseries. This has been great. They've been planting thousands of uh, little seedlings in the tree nurseries with several groups of parents around Arabuka Sukoki Forest and we're hoping that they'll grow quickly and we'll be able to plant them out come the rains. Uh, that's been an exciting program and one we're very glad to have funded and be able to expand over the next two years. <laughs>
And did you see any sharks this morning? Uh, this morning we are yet to, I mean in the footage, we are yet to analyze the footage. Of course. Yeah, yeah. but then we haven't seen any other round as okay. we are trying to do some uh, surveys. Okay. Yeah. And why is there a focus on sharks? Uh, the focus is because uh, uh, sharks are really, there's a lot of pressures that are they're undergoing. And so we first want to know, like uh, for example, in the park here, yeah. we want to identify which are the types of sharks that are in the park, yeah. and then now we can be able to know how, like how important the, the park is in terms of conservation of those sharks. Right. Uh, because some of them, for example, the halavi guitar fish, is one of the critical endangered species that we have in the park. And so by us getting that information that we have it here, yeah. and where it is uh, found in the which habitat, and then we can easily know uh, which are the areas to put more uh, focus on in terms of. Uh, Patrol by the Kenya Wildlife Service and management. Yeah. And management. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry to hijack you no off worries. the beach. Any time. It's, <laughs> it's a great project, and yeah, yeah, it's been very good to do that. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Great. Perfect. <laughs> 2021 is a great year for us because it's 20 years since uh, the Assets Program started, the Arable Kosokoke Schools and Ecotourism Scheme, and I'm delighted to have Stanley with me here, who's been with us since the start of that. Um, and was the original assets coordinator and got the whole thing rolling and we started at three schools and we're now with how many schools are we taking children 11 from? schools 11 schools we're taking children from primary and sponsoring them to secondary school for their full four years yes. and now we've sponsored how many students so uh, far so far over 660 students have been sponsored. excellent and then of course there's it's not just sponsoring children but it's linking it to conservation indeed and tell us, there's been a, we've got a, a new era of that now, isn't it? Yeah, recently Kenya Community Development Foundation are now supporting us to work with the community on energy saving, uh, energy saving cookers and also water conservation. Excellent, that's great. And uh, the part of the water conservation issues involve also tree planting, is that right, in tree nurseries? It, yes, there is going to be a component where we will be installing water tanks and supporting establishment of tree nurseries to raise over uh, 30,000 seedlings that will be planted. Some in the forest, some in community open spaces, and some in the schools that we are supporting students from. That's great. And uh, what sort of trees? Are they the alien fast-growing trees, or which we, ones? We will be planting mostly indigenous, indigenous trees, but there will be a small number of exotic trees that community members can plant and harvest for their own use. But the majority of the trees we'll be planting will be indigenous trees that are found in the areas that we will be planted. Right. So that's that's a really exciting thing because um, the whole reason for assets is conservation of Arabu Kusukoka school uh, forest. Indeed. So that's a real, that's a very exciting. We're very grateful to KCDF Indeed. for that work. Now, you're wearing a t-shirt that says the Sokoke Forest MTB Challenge. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is that about? <laughs> yes, yeah, Arosha has been, has been in, um, running this uh, mountain bike challenge for the last two we've done two phases of it now where we have people uh, cycling bicycles from the beachfront here all the way to the other side of the forest and through the forest and come back to, to Turtle Bay Beach Hotel and we are doing that to raise funds now to support the children that we are, so, uh, we are sponsoring through assets. assets. Yes. Excellent. And uh, we're running again this year and I think the, the date is the 22nd of May Indeed. we're running that. Yes. And uh, so we'd invite anyone watching this to come and join us for that. We're looking to people to raise sponsorship for themselves as well. Um, but also we're getting sponsorship from different companies, Lordship Africa, um, Turtle Bay Beach Club mm. and Ocean Sports mm -hmm. are really pulling their weight on helping us on that. Indeed. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a lot a lot of fun to do that. Absolutely, and you better train hard because I'll be taking part in it. <laughs> yeah. We look forward to that, Stanley. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to update you a little bit about our work in Nairobi. We've been blessed with that property there, which we've had almost 20 years now, um, and we've got developing plans for a uh, conservation education centre there, together with offices with partners, conservation partners, uh, which is a long-term grand vision, but we've been having some interesting conversations recently, which we hope will 
uh, develop into something uh, before not too long. So overall, we're really grateful for what God has uh, brought us through over the last year or so uh, through the COVID period. Looking ahead to 2021, uh, I think there's a lot of good things in store and we're excited for what the year will bring and we'll be looking forward to update you further in due course. Thank you for your support and prayers and until then.